My people, hope we're doing well. This is video three uh, for the curve sketching examples. Uh, and if you're thinking to yourself, my gosh, I thought the last one was going to be complicated. This one's going to be super complicated. Uh, in reality, actually, this one works out pretty, pretty well. Uh, just think about the, the denominators of both of those. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's, let's walk through, since I kind of like to do this, let's walk through what we should think about the original, what the original function should look like, okay? Uh, now, if we go to, uh, if we go to the y equals, we can put an in arctan into y1, we can put in the natural log of x squared plus one into y2. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this just a little bit. I wanna see both of the contributing functions before I see the difference function. So let's go ahead and graph. <clears throat> now you should be familiar with the graph of, of arctan, okay? <clears throat> Here comes natural log of x squared plus one. Now remember, uh, natural log of x is simply, simply right here, okay? I turned that off, I thought. Okay, turn it off. <clears throat> natural log of x is gonna be right here and has a domain of zero to infinity, non-inclusive of zero. It has to be, the x has to be positive. But when you take that argument and you square it and then add one, it necessarily always is positive, and therefore there becomes no break in the domain, and therefore you get this red graph. And notice the symmetry of it, right? It is actually symmetric. Uh, it is symmetric about the y-axis. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the domain. Okay. Actually, let's go ahead and look at let's go ahead and look at the difference function first. And here's what happens when you actually take the difference function. Now, notice that for the interval from negative infinity up to right here at the origin, the red graph, okay, the natural log function is on top, and therefore this difference should be negative. And over here, from this point of intersection, it's the same thing, but for this brief moment right here between those points of intersection, the arctan is greater in its output than the natural log. So basically it should be positive just in that small interval and it should be negative everywhere else. Well, let's go ahead and let's turn this on again. <clears throat> and here comes the difference function. Negative outputs like we expected, a brief moment of positive outputs and then negative again. Okay, now notice that it doesn't look like there's symmetry on the difference function. And now remember when this arctan is odd, this natural log x squared plus one is even. Now, even times odd is odd. Even divided by odd is odd. Odd minus even is nothing. I mean, just think about, uh, just think about what it would be, you know, y is equal to x cubed is odd, but minus even function x squared, that winds up, of course, having no symmetry uh, whatsoever. It's neither even nor odd. Uh, so we shouldn't expect symmetry on this one, even though the two contributing functions do have it. Now let's go back to actually answering <clears throat> the questions that were asked. The domain, as I've already alluded to, is negative infinity to infinity. Now, you probably noticed from the graph that the range comes from negative infinity, but it actually does have a maximum value, <clears throat> but that maximum value will be discerned later and we'll come back and we'll fill it in, okay? Now, we need to find x-intercepts. Well, that basically takes us, uh, you have to basically put them together, and since there are two different classes of functions, you're gonna have to use your calculator for this, okay? So what we need to do is, in order to sort of clean this stuff up. Let's go ahead and turn y1 and y2 off. Let's go to the window and change it from maybe negative one to uh, two, okay? And maybe negative two to two, and let's graph it. So we see the fact that we have a zero, zero, <clears throat> a zero, zero, uh, and you can confirm that just by plugging in zero, arctan of zero, zero. 
natural log of x of 0 squared plus 1 is the natural log of 1, 0. So the origin is one of our zeros. This is the one that's a little bit problematic. So let's go ahead and second calc, press number 2, <clears throat> and it asks us to find the left bound. So it's basically asking us to get close to the 0, but just to the left of it. And then it's asking us to get to the right of the 0, um, but not on top of it. And we get 1.2. 172. Okay, so basically my x intercepts are going to be 0, 0, and 1.172, 0. And of course, I got that one from my calculator. And since I'm going through the origin, that is also going to be uh, my y intercept. <clears throat> now, we've already talked about the symmetry. In terms of symmetry, we have none, okay? In terms of asymptotes, uh, we also have none, okay? Now, arctan does have in-behavior asymptotes, but the moment that you throw in this natural log x squared plus 1, it doesn't. So there are no asymptotes. There's certainly no vertical asymptotes, right? Nothing is being barred from existence because of the rational structure and a denominator being 0 but it also doesn't have any end behavior asymptotes. So from there, basically, we have all of the Algebra 2 pre-cal kind of knowledge that we need. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. Now y prime, let's go ahead and take the derivative of arctan, that's one over one plus x squared, but let's call it x squared plus one, just for giggles, minus, and this becomes two x over x squared plus one, and of course, I chose this very specifically because this winds up having the same denominator <clears throat> and makes it rather easy. Now, my critical value is not going to come from the denominator being 0. We've already discussed that. x squared plus 1 can't be 0. But I know that 1 minus 2x in the numerator can be, it can be 0 if x is equal to 1 half. <clears throat> I have one critical value for the first derivative. That's it. So I go from negative infinity to 1 half, x is equal to 1 half, and 1 half to infinity. <clears throat> now, we've already seen what the graph looks like, so it shouldn't be a surprise to us, but if we go ahead and plug in 0 as a representative value for this into here, we're going to get 1 minus 0, or positive in that numerator. Denominator is always positive, so it's not going to impact the, the positiveness or negativeness of y prime. But if I plug in 2 right here as a representative value of this interval, I'm going to get 1 minus 4, a negative. So basically, <clears throat> I have increasing on negative infinity to 1 half. I have decreasing from 1 half to infinity and I have a max and you know you can basically plug that into your calculator uh, you have a max at one half and the the decimal output is 0.241 when you get you know arctan of one half minus the natural log of five fourths right because the one half is going to get squared and add to one and basically it's a max at that value because y prime changes, I'm going to move that up, <clears throat> from positive to negative. And that, of course, like I said before, is the language of the first derivative test. So I've done everything in terms of y prime. Now, y double prime is going to, understandably, be a little bit more difficult. But, you know, it's a pretty straightforward, uh, it's a pretty straightforward quotient. So let's go ahead and rewrite y prime. y prime is 1 minus 2x over x squared plus 1. So y double prime, we're going to do the quotient rule. Start with the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Numerator times the derivative of the denominator. All of that over <coughs> the denominator squared. Now, uh, when we go ahead and we and we simplify all this and we distribute and we collect like terms and stuff like that, I will bore you. I will not bore you with that this time around. 
uh, basically it simplifies to this. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I know that that denominator is not going to give me any critical values because it's always positive and therefore it will never be zero, but that numerator might, but it's certainly not going to give it to me by factoring nicely. You're right, it's not going to give it to you by factoring nicely. So you have basically two choices. You can use the, uh, you can use completing the square when you set that quadratic equal to zero, or you can use the Pythagorean theorem. I mean the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. And you know, x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of <clears throat> b squared minus 4ac. Uh, all of that over uh, 2a, which is just 2. And you get 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2, which is kind of interesting uh, because for those of you who uh, know what the golden ratio is uh, or the Fibonacci sequence, 1.618, basically the 1 plus root 5 over 2, is, uh, is, a, is a number called phi, or the golden ratio. Uh, but those are your critical values for your second derivative. So second derivative critical values. Now, that means that it chops up the domain into three pieces, right? So not that much more work. Uh, so we get negative infinity to negative 0 0.618. X is equal to negative 0 0.618. Negative 0 0.618 to 1.618. Uh, X is equal to 1.618. And then 1.618 to infinity. And I guess I wrote a little bit larger than I expected myself to, so let's do that. And then let's evaluate the second derivative uh, on those intervals. So why double prime on those intervals? Obviously, I can plug in a negative one from here. If I plug in a negative one as a representative value of this interval, and I plug in back up into here, I'm going to get one plus one minus one, right? Because the negative one in this first is gonna get squared, turning it positive. And then, you know, and then the negative one is going to turn this negative into a positive. So it's one plus one minus one. Is that what I said the first time? Okay, whatever. One plus one, two minus one, positive one, right? Times two. So the numerator is positive there, and therefore the whole thing is positive. Again, because that denominator is always going to be positive. The only thing that has the potential to change the positiveness or negativeness of the second derivative is that quadratic in the numerator. Now, obviously, I can use 0 as a representative value here. 0 minus 0 minus 1, negative. Let's go ahead and plug in 2. You're going to get 4 minus 2 minus 1. That's still going to be positive, And therefore, I get concave up, concave down, concave up. <clears throat> now, I know that I have two points of inflection. OK, and that's because uh, y double prime changed sign at both. Uh, it's both second derivative critical values. And I'm abbreviating because I'm trying not to make this video any longer than it has to be. Uh, but when in doubt, don't abbreviate. Uh, now, you also know that it's going to be concave up on negative infinity to negative 0.618 union 1.618 to infinity and it's going to be concave down <coughs> uh, on the interval of course between those and I just read that right off of the sign chart and those are my intervals of concavity now the points of inflection when you actually go ahead and plug these two numbers back into the original equation uh, are negative 0 0.618 and negative 0 0.877 <clears throat> and 1.618 and negative 0 0.269. All right. Now, kind of, you know, kind of annoying numbers, uh, but, you know, the, the derivatives weren't nearly as bad as you probably thought they were going to be when you first saw the function. It actually wound up working out not too, not too bad, uh, largely because uh, the only thing that actually wind up being problematic is just having to do the quadratic formula to find the critical values of that second derivative. But, you know, as big bad calculus students, I expect you to do such things and be able to do so uh, and like it. 
No, you don't have to like it. But all right, now we've already seen the function and we've seen the fact that the maximum value is only going to get up to, uh, remember the maximum value is only gonna get up to 0.241. So the majority of the graph is below the x-axis. And because it's below the x-axis, I'm not gonna put the x-axis in the middle. I'm gonna draw it right about here. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw the y-axis since, since the little positive section that comes up and, and just peaks over the x-axis is a little bit, is basically to the right of the y-axis. I'm not going to draw the y-axis immediately in the middle, but just a tad to the left. Uh, just gives me a little bit, a little bit more uh, of an appropriate location for the for the window. And I'm gonna eh, let's do four boxes for every unit. I think that sounds good. <clears throat> okay. Now I know that I have a zero here. And I know that I have another zero, and we figured it was at 1.172. Now that's at 1.25. So 1.172 is eh, right about there. Okay. Now, and you don't have to be, you know, basically you just need to have it in the ballpark, right? I mean, you know, that may be closer to 1.20 rather than 1.17, but I'm, I'm, I'm close, right? So what I need to also do is I need to go ahead and put the maximum. Now the maximum happened at an input that was very familiar to us at one half, but the maximum, the output value was just shy of one quarter at 0.241. So we'll go ahead and put that right there. Now the inflection points that I wound up with were at negative 0.618. So negative five, negative 7, 0.75, negative six, uh, 1, 8 is right about here, and then negative 0. 0.8, so close to negative 0. 0.9, and we'll go ahead and put it somewhere right about there. And then 1.6 is going to be out here past 1.5, and at negative, just a little past negative, uh, negative quarter, okay? Now, I don't have a whole lot of extra points that have been plotted, so I can go ahead and t-chart a few values if that's, you know, if that winds up being helpful. Now, in order to do that, of course, let's go ahead and go back to our calculator. Um, you can go ahead and come up here to the second calc, and of course that's going to give you the sort of input and output values. Now notice that once you get down to about four, that's at negative, it's, oh, that's almost exactly at negative 1.5. Here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can actually see the table a little bit better. Okay. Notice that at positive four, the output, the, the, I mean, the, the output's at roughly negative 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that as sort of a helper point for our graphing. <clears throat> and on the other side, uh, you notice that at, I don't know, let's look at negative three. Negative three is roughly at negative 3.5. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. Uh, I've plotted the 4, roughly 1.5, and then negative 3, negative 3.5 is going to be right about here, okay? And that just gives me, that just gives me an idea of how quickly from this point it's leaving the Cartesian, like how steeply it's leaving the Cartesian plane. Now what I need to remember is that this point right here and that point right there are inflection points, so between them it should be concave down. All right, and then starting at those points, and I'm gonna turn it just a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna turn it this way. Uh, it should kind of be, it should kind of, kind of cup up, as in concave up, right? Uh, and then this one, hit it kind of like that. Uh, and that is basically uh, accurate sketch of the curve. It's large enough, it shows me all the relevant points that I need. Two inflection points, a maximum, x-intercepts, and these of course were just for the accuracy of, of where the curve leaves uh, the plane. Okay, and those are, those are pretty important. You always want to draw an accurate sketch of the curve to the edge of the Cartesian plane that's been given to you. Now, <clears throat> we of course have seen the graph, but here's another view of it right here, and that basically, it's just a different scale, that's why it's a little bit flatter, but that confirms the fact that we have indeed uh, sketched an accurate sketch of the curve. Okay. Um, 
that's it for this video. Um, I may or may not make any uh, past this, but uh, if you have any questions, please do shoot me an email. Bye.